Hey guys, I am John, an architecture student here in the Philippines and for today's video, I'm going to show you the fastest way to render your floor plans using Photoshop. Oh my God. In order to keep up with this tutorial, all you need is the basics of Adobe Photoshop and the toolkit that I've created. It uses Photoshop Actions to automate the process of rendering. If you want to see the details, links are found below. So without further ado, let me show you how I render this floor plan in under 15 minutes. So the toolkit basically have a couple of Photoshop files that you need to import to Photoshop. Once you open Photoshop, we can use the toolkit with the help of these tools here. As you can see, we have the Photoshop actions, brushes, layer styles, and patterns located here. If you don't have these tools, you need to activate the tools by clicking Window, then click Actions. Then it will automatically enable the tool. Do the same thing with the brushes, patterns, and styles. Now we need to import the files. For the Photoshop actions, click this three stripped icon and click Load Actions. Then locate the folder of the toolkit and in the Photoshop actions folder, select one of the ATN files. You can only import one file at a time, so do the same steps for all the ATN files. I already imported the file, so I'll just cancel this. Next, for the patterns, brushes, and layer styles, the same steps would apply. Just click the icon here and select Import. In the file directory, all files are organized into folders so you know what to import. Now to start, you need a PDF file of your CAD floor plan drawings. I would recommend separating the floor plan and its annotations and other layers for easier selection in Photoshop. By doing this, you will have different layers of your drawing which makes the selections even faster. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can download the files used in this video for you to practice. Links are found below. So in Photoshop, create a new file and set the canvas to the size of your paper or a high resolution canvas. I would recommend at least 4000 pixels. Drag and drop your CAD drawings to Photoshop and click enter. To align the annotations, click the layer and press Ctrl T. You can click and drag to align them but you can also use the arrow keys for more precision. After aligning your CAD drawings, we can now render the walls. First, you need to make a selection of all the walls. You can do this by selecting the magic wand tool located here. Make sure the floor plans layer is selected and click the walls of your plan. After the first selection, hold shift and you can see a plus icon on your cursor. This means that it will add a selection of your current selection. Holding alt will do the opposite and will deselect the selection. So you can select the other walls while holding shift and click the area. You can also hold space to pan over the workspace. After all the walls are selected, you can see that only the inner portion of the walls are selected. To render the walls properly, you need to expand the selection so the lines are also selected. You can do this by going to modify, select, then expand. Depending on the thickness of the lines, you need to set the number of pixels. In my case, it would be 3 pixels. Click OK and your selection would expand. Now here's my favorite part. After you selected all the walls, go to Photoshop Actions and you can see here a bunch of presets that I made. We have the wall styles, column styles, shadow presets, and other shortcuts. All the actions are organized into folders for easier use. For the walls, there are about 17 wall styles that you can choose from. But for this tutorial, I'll be choosing the gray hatched walls. After selecting the wall style that you want, click display button below to activate and this will automatically create the wall style for you. If you want to see a preview of all the styles, links are found below. Next, we'll render the columns by doing the same steps again. Select the magic wand tool and select the columns while holding shift. Go to modify, select then expand to expand the selection. Assign the number of pixels then click OK. Go to Photoshop Actions and select the column style that you want. There are 10 column styles to choose from. For this case, I will be choosing the black column. Click play to activate and it will create the column for you. Next, we'll render the windows. The same steps will apply. Make a selection of the windows, select the style that you want, and apply the Photoshop Actions. That's basically the steps that you need to remember. Now for this case, I will be using the rectangle selection since it will be the faster way than the magic wand tool. 
Holding shift while selecting the windows also works here to add a selection to the current selection. There are actually different ways of selection in Photoshop and either of these ways work the same. Just use the best process of your choice. After we selected all the windows, we can now go to Photoshop Actions again, but this time we'll go to other shortcuts, Window Render, then click Activate. As you can see, it created a window style. You can also change its color by changing the settings in this layer and adjust the brightness of the window light. But for this case, I will stay it as is for now. Next, we'll create shadows. To do this, you need to select the walls and columns. As you can see, there are layer groups for the walls and columns, and this is where the base layer is located. While holding control, click the thumbnail of the base layer to select the walls. Make sure this icon would appear while hovering your cursor to ensure it will be selected. Next, select the columns with the same steps. Just like what I taught you a while ago, hold Ctrl and Shift, then click the thumbnail of the column base layer to create an additional selection. Without deselecting, go to Photoshop Actions, Dynamic Shadows, and select the shadow style that you want. The number here indicates the length of the shadow, so 10 pixels will be the shortest and 80 pixels will be the longest. For this case, I will be choosing the 80 pixel shadow. Next, click the play button to activate. As you can see, it created shadows for you. The best thing about this shadow is that they are dynamic. This means that you can quickly change the direction of the shadows. Under the shadow layer, click this down arrow and double click drop shadow. This window tab will appear and there is an angle you can modify. You can click and drag this angle here. As you can see, it will automatically change the angle of the shadows. You can also input an angle here to change its direction. Then click OK to save. The next thing that we need to do is to add materials. The first step will be selecting the floors of the plan and now we'll be using the magic wand tool again. There are times when some areas are not selected, so you need to adjust the selection manually. After it is selected, go to Photoshop Actions, Other Shortcuts, then click Add Material Shortcuts. Click Play to activate and a default material would appear. You can change the material by double-clicking this thumbnail of the materials layer. By clicking this drop-down, you will see a collection of patterns that you can choose from. For this tutorial, I will be choosing one of these wood floorings. You can also change its scale by changing this setting. If you're using Photoshop 2021 and above, there will be an option for you to change its direction or angle by changing the values here. We can also lower the opacity of the material since it's too vibrant. I would suggest changing the names of the layers for better organization. This will save you a lot of time, especially when there are already tons of materials in your drawing. Also, make sure all the materials are under the floor plan and windows layer. One reminder is to make sure to select the layer below the lowest material group before activating the shortcut. This ensures that you will create another layer group underneath this material group. If you were to activate a shortcut above this layer, Photoshop will create a whole new group for all of these layers, which makes it confusing to locate the layers. So make sure to select the layer below it before activating the shortcut. Now we will do the same steps again with the other floors and materials that we need to add. If there are cases where the area is not selectable with the one tool because the lines are open like this phantom line here, just create a duplicate of the layer, rasterize it, and draw a solid line under this layer. Now you can select it with the magic wand tool. One tip in rendering materials is don't overdo it. Materials should be subtle and clean. I would suggest lowering the opacity of the material if it's too overwhelming. Next, after all the floorings are rendered, we'll be adding shadows to the furnitures. Now, instead of selecting them manually, there is a technique to select the furnitures all at once. While holding the control key, we'll select all the layers except for the layers containing the line drawings. It will be better if you group them for easier selection. Now, while holding the Alt key, drag the layers to the top to create a duplicate. We will just group these layers to avoid confusions. Next, under these duplicated layers, we will delete all the layers of the shadows, so it would look like a flat drawing like this. Now, select all the duplicated layers again, then press Ctrl E to merge all of these duplicated layers. As you can see, it will look like this with some negative spaces that we can select. We can hide this layer and by using the magic wand tool or press W, we can quickly click on these spaces to select the furniture. Next, we can go to Photoshop Actions, Dynamic Shadows, and we will choose 50 pixel shadows, then select Activate. 
Now we've created the furniture shadows that quickly. Just make sure that these shadows is above the material layers and below the floor plan layer. Now, I will be showing three important tips in presenting your floor plans. The first tip would be adding details. There are actually other uses for the shadows. Aside from using them for the walls and columns, you can actually use them in adding shadows to another object. For example, I want to create a shadow in this area here. All you need to do is to create a rectangle selection like this, then add a 10 pixel dynamic shadows using the shortcut. You can use this trick for the stairs and adding depth to certain floor elevations as well. Another tip is using imperfections on materials. All patterns in this toolkit are seamless so sometimes it can look very repetitive. One thing you can do is search for imperfections in Google and download the one that you like. Import it to Photoshop and adjust the size of the image. Next, create a clipping mask above the layer by right clicking then select create a clipping mask. Change the bending mode to multiply or overlay then adjust the opacity to your liking. Next, select the layer and click this icon to create a mask. Press Ctrl I to invert the mask then select a white soft brush and paint over the material to add imperfections. These imperfections would normally go under the furnitures and the edges of the walls. This is also effective when rendering grass materials. The next step will be adding your own material. You may need a specific material for a particular project which may not be included in the materials library. So you need to add the materials yourself. Just make sure the textures are seamless. You can find high quality textures on this site called textures.com. Now let's say you want this texture. You can download this by going below and clicking this icon. Once downloaded, drag the file to Photoshop and make sure to hover it on this tab to create a new file. Next, select everything by pressing Ctrl A then go to Actions, Other Shortcuts, select Define Pattern and click Activate. If you go to the Patterns tab, you can see a new material was loaded in your library. You can right click and rename the material and drag it to the group it belongs. Now you can use this material in your future renderings. Now after everything is done, the last thing that I usually do is to add non-dynamic shadows in my drawings. We can do this by creating a selection of the entire floor plan. Any selection process you prefer will do. After selecting, go to Actions, Non-Dynamic Shadows, and for this case, I will be choosing 315 degrees since that's the angle of my shadows. Non-Dynamic Shadows may take a few seconds to render since it's quite heavy. After a few seconds, it will create this interesting shadow which adds a little detail to your drawing. You can also lower the opacity down if it's too much. And that's it, the fastest way to render your floor plans. If you want to learn more about architectural presentations, hit the like button and follow me on my socials. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you on the next one.